Welcome to Dust Geek. I know why you're here. You're here to see me eat my words with Gnome. Well, I'm going to eat them a little bit because I've given Gnome some flack over, over the last few weeks. There's a fantastic podcast that I am so proud to be uh, one of the four members of Destination Linux. Go check it out. In there, one of the hosts, Rocco, Big Daddy Linux, he loves Gnome. I've even sent him a Gnome that he uses in the background, and I've been giving it some flack, and he's like, you know what? I challenge you to try Gnome out and not fall in love with it. So I took his challenge, and I'm going to eat my words a little bit because I didn't fall in love with it per se, but I am really starting to enjoy it but not with its default. So let's get into what I, why I've been giving Gnome some flack for a while here, and then let's get into what I've done to be able to overcome that. Now, you guys know typically I prefer things like i3 is one of my favorite using a Windows Manager as my desktop environment because of the productivity that it offers and being able to use your keyboard shortcuts to move Windows around and those type of things and tile all of the screens that I have open at once, whether I'm doing web development, even in gaming, being able to move a game entirely with a keyboard shortcut from one monitor to the other is just ridiculously convenient and it's fun. But i3 isn't for everybody and it doesn't offer a lot of, well, at least by default, it doesn't offer a ton of beauty and application. You really have to go in there and configure and set it up unless you use like Eric from Arch Merge pre-configured setup or even Manjaro has a really nice pre-configured setup for i3. Uh, but even with that, you're going to want to go in there and customize. And that can take a lot of work until you initially get it set up. So having a desktop environment like a Mate or a Gnome where everything is pre-set up and beautiful for you out of the box is really nice. But here's the thing that bugged me about Gnome. When you would go to select an application, and by the way, I know a lot of people love this feature. I just personally, for me, do not like this workflow. It takes up this huge amount of real estate on my screen to look for an application. Now it's nice, It's it looks nice, it's neat, but it's really not something I prefer. This looks like kind of if you're using an Android device and you want to go into your apps, how it takes over your whole screen and shows you all the applications. But on a desktop environment, it's not something that I personally prefer. And you can see there's these huge icons. And additionally, on my second monitor here, it's taken every application and put it into a window preview mode. So now my second monitor is completely unable to be touched or manipulated the programs inside while I'm on this screen. From a productivity standpoint, this to me is a killer. This is one of the core reasons why I didn't like GNOME. However, there are ways to get around that. And once you start configuring some of these things, some of these ways around it are pretty awesome, the configuration options that are out there. I just wish they were default in GNOME and that they would put more emphasis on them and their availability, and I think more people would really find and fall in love with its capability. So I'm not a big fan of this. Every once in a while, it's fine, uh, but it's just not something that I personally enjoy. You've got your frequent and all here uh, applications you can choose from. Now, you can see what I've done instead is I've set up a GNOME extension that allows me to have this menu here, which is your typical menu that you're more used to, whether you're coming from Windows 10 or any other desktop environment within Linux, you're kind of used to having a menu like this, although this one's very beautiful. As you hover over the categories, you can see all your icons and everything categorized for you. Just absolutely gorgeous. Love it. And so you can add this in with the GNOME extension. So now my entire desktop's not being taken over when I want to launch an application, especially if I'm doing something where I need both monitors working together and not having my screen on the second monitor completely frozen or taken up. That's pretty cool. Now, installing GNOME extensions is kind of a weird process because it works through your browser. Now, whether you're using Vivaldi like I am here or Chrome browser or Firefox or whatever browser you like to use, as long as it has the ability to get extensions, in this case, Vivaldi uses Chrome extensions, you can install something called GNOME Shell Integration. Once you install that, you'll probably get a warning saying or a little red mark above when you actually go to your extensions here that will tell you that these can't work until you install the shell, the GNOME Shell. So you type in the terminal command, it installs the GNOME Shell, and then these will be available to install. So it's not something simple like they should have set up where you just go into settings and hit a toggle switch and now you have extensions enabled. That would be really nice. It's almost like they don't want 
most users to even know this exists. I'm okay with them even hiding it in settings, but it should be there because it's amazing. There's so much you can do. There are so many extensions here to customize. It's incredible. There are just hundreds and hundreds of extensions that you can add to do all kinds of different things. And these are the extensions that I have. So this no menu, and this is thanks to Big Daddy Linux from his channel, is one of the first ones I installed, and that gets me that awesome menu, very clean, crisp, doesn't take over my desktop. And then there's Gnomesome here, which is a tiling manager. So you know how I like to use i3 and I like to tile windows? Well, I can, this uses kind of an awesome like interface. That's why it's called Gnomesome. Like, I guess that's a playoff awesome. And I can move and start tiling my windows. If I have multiple terminals or windows open, I can start tiling them using these keyboard shortcuts. And here's the kicker. I can go into the configuration file. I can set up the default layouts here, but I can also edit the keyboard settings so that I can set up all of my keyboard shortcuts that I would have moving windows to different workspaces, to different monitors, to set up workspaces, to toggle the floating, just like I would in a typical tile manager, making this really a productive tool in desktop environment now once that's installed. How cool is that? I absolutely love it. <clears throat> the next thing I didn't like about GNOME was the top left corner. You would move your corner. I would move up here on accident, and all of a sudden all my screens were taken up to, again, search for applications or whatever. I don't want the hot corner, so I was able to remove that. And then the sound output device chooser. Let me move this over. I was blocking it uh, with my big fat head, but now you guys can see what I was talking about. Let me open that configuration file again in case my big fat head was blocking that too. And here are some of the modifications that you can uh, make that I was talking about. And here is our sound chooser. So now I can actually select which uh, you know, audio device I want to use because I have you know a, a nice selection of them from headphones to the Scarlet interface to speakers, etc. Uh, that I can select from here and be able to switch to very quickly. So now it starts adding all this additional functionality, but I still have all the beauty of a pre-configured kind of desktop environment here set up, which makes it really unique. Additionally, if I don't even want to go to the menu, because using something like an i3 tiling manager, you start getting used to the keyboard combinations for D3 menu or like a J4 menu, where you can launch applications really fast. We can use something, I think it's called Gnome Do, and I could set up a keyboard combination like this, and I could type in tweaks, and now I can launch applications without ever having to open a menu. So this is the application Gnome Do, and you could set up your keyboard shortcut for Gnome Do to launch at any point. So again, if I want to open something else, I could do Control Shift D in my case and search for an application or escape to make it go away. So now I don't even have to move my cursor to the left-hand corner to open an application. I can just do it from there. So once you start adding all this in, Gnome starts becoming really, really productive and matching my personal workflow, which may be yours as well. And then, of course, there's Gnome Tweaks which allows you to do things like add icons back onto your desktop. By the way, we're in Ubuntu 18.04 here, which hasn't fully released. We're on uh, one of the beta builds here. You can mess with your keyboard and mouse, your power, your startup, your top bars, and your windows to set up additional workspaces, all of those things through there. So once you add in the extensions and add in GNOME tweaks and figure out which extensions you want, there really is some beauty here within GNOME. Now, as a default desktop environment, I will not eat my words on the fact that I still think it's not really for uh, super productive individuals like myself anyways in my personal workflow. But once you add in those features, it starts becoming something really magical. And running on a Debian-based or Ubuntu-based distribution gives you all of that compatibility. Like the second I installed this, you know, one of the things with Arch is a lot of times NAS network drives and things like that uh, won't be set up properly, especially if they're Samba-based and you've got to go install additional drivers. Your printer, you're going to be sitting there in cups trying to find drivers for it, depending on the type of printer you have. I have an Epson workforce, and it's a constant battle to set it up within Arch. But in Ubuntu, in having that as your base, you basically just install it, the operating system, and then it finds the printer. It found it the second I booted in, and I could print from it immediately. Ubuntu, frankly, is just more compatible uh, out of the box with everything and allows you, a lot of times because of the pre-installed packages and things that they have, uh, to get to work right away. So GNOME, 
I wouldn't go out there and say it's my favorite desktop environment. I don't think you'll ever hear me say that. But with some tweaks, it can be as good as any other desktop environment. Personally, I would still uh, tomorrow utilize something like Mate that has a little more configuration out of the box, I think. Uh, but there is something unique here, or an XFCE, for instance. There is something unique here to be enjoyed and loved. So I will eat my words on that, that GNOME can become something quite amazing if you configure it properly. Let me know in the comments below if there's some additional extensions and things I should check out. I am not a GNOME expert, by the way. These are things that uh, I kind of figured out watching Big Daddy Linux channel and doing a little bit of research on my own, but I'm just a couple weeks into GNOME here, and uh, I'm starting to really enjoy myself, and I have to admit it on camera. Until next time, get out there and fill your brains. I had visited Uncle Fred's house countless of times, but in the locker, which usually was closed, I found something I hadn't seen before. It was an adventure suit. It resembled the one that Fred used, but smaller in size. Curiosity got the better of me, and I tried it on. It fit like it had been custom made for me. The most mysterious room of my uncle's house was the observatory. There he kept his newest experiments, and right now it held a pad used for disposing of garbage. I landed with a crash, but thanks to the suit I wasn't hurt. I had no idea where the pad had taken me, but... Back then, I didn't care so much about where I was going, or how I would get home. The suit protected me from falls on the ground, but not in water. I couldn't swim with this thing on. Best be careful. I was sure that someone had been here before me. Someone had built these bridges and carved these symbols, but who, where were they now? suit's grappling device when I picked it up. It must have been left here by my uncle. grappling device left a sort of symbol everywhere I grappled. I noticed similar symbols already there in the cave, and I was getting more and more certain that this place was where Fred had gone. Thank mm -hmm. you.
Thank <laughs> you.